Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Did you remember to put the clocks back? Yes. Yes. We have, but clearly so does happen. <laughs> I think at 3 o'clock we're supposed to put the clocks back to 2 o'clock. But there's some people when they get to 17 minutes past 3, they think of putting the clocks back a long way. 15, 17. For 504 years ago, a monk called Martin Luther with a hammer and lots of bits of interestingly written paper, dissertations or ideas, put them onto a church door at a place called Wittenberg. And this was the start of the Reformation. So today is actually Reformation Day. And today, on this day, we are looking at the light of the world. So a very big welcome. You can see we're doing something rather different today. And this service is being taken by everybody who's here. Each one of us is going to share in this service. Um, so if you want to run away, it's your big chance now. <laughs> Tim, come back. <laughs> Let's pray to the Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are with us. You are the Lord. You are the light of the world. You are the light in our hearts. We pray that you would lead us and guide us, strengthen us through this meeting together today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first song is called Light of the World. Which uh, you will be able to stand if you wish to and sing and join in the words will appear on the screen.
Colin the other day. I can't see Colin anywhere. It's rather dark. <laughs> yeah, I did. I can hear his voice, but I can't see him. <laughs> Colin? Yeah, I can't see you anywhere. I can't see you now. <laughs> well, we're focusing on the light today, but we need the light because we've got a problem. Problem of darkness. That's right. Now, darkness is a big problem. Now, you see Colin over here? Perhaps you, perhaps you can't see him in the gloom. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. <laughs> but Colin has now got a problem because Colin, you can't see, can you? Absolutely not at all. No. Right, so Colin, I wonder if you would just stand up, just take a step or two forward, maybe one, two more steps forward, right? Turn to the right slightly. Now, can you see? I've, there are some obstacles in your way, Colin. I can't can see you, anything. Can you see them? No, I can see Joe, but that's a, that's a yeah. <laughs> right. I'm going to I'm going to try and guide you, but it's going to be difficult because right. you're in the dark. Darkness yes. is a problem, isn't it? We can't see where we're going. But I'll try and help you or guide you. So just take a couple of short steps forward. A couple more. A couple more. Right, turn a bit to your right. Right. Take a couple more steps forward. Couple more steps forward. Stop there. Now, if you can reach out in front of you, Colin, with your left hand, just lean down, a, lean down a little bit. That, ah, now can you see the obstacle? Now you couldn't see that though, could you? That obstacle was in your way, but you couldn't see it because of the darkness that's surrounding you. So, I'd like to just turn around to your left now. Take two, one more step forward. You can just feel the obstacle, all right? So, work your way around it. Now, come around to your right now. Take a couple more steps forward. Put your left hand out again. Can you feel the other obstacle? Okay. Yes. Yes. So, so turn around and go around it. Well done. So give him a round of applause. Okay, you may remove. Thank you, Colin. <laughs> I was never in the brown. Then. Okay. Colin needed some help there, didn't he? Because he couldn't see. He couldn't see the obstacles in his way in the darkness. And however, although we have a problem of darkness, there is a solution. There is a solution. And that solution is Jesus, the light of the world. I'm going to show you a little video here, um, which will hopefully illustrate this problem, will illustrate the solution to the problem. Let's go back. I'm going to do a little experiment which reminds us that Jesus is the light of the world. He takes away our sins. This dish represents our lives and all that they contain, our attitudes, thoughts, words and actions. The Bible tells us that our lives are affected in every part by our wrongdoing, our failure to meet up to God's standards, what the Bible calls sin. In fact, our lives are full of sin. Titus chapter 3, verse 3, it says that at one time we were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. Not a pretty picture, is it? A bit like the dish full of black liquid. Well, that's the bad news about our lives and what comes from within our hearts. As Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, are deceitful above all things and beyond cure. But the brilliant good news of the gospel is that Jesus, the light of the world, came into this world to take away our sins and to cleanse our hearts. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When Jesus went to the cross and died there, it appeared that the light that he had promised had gone out. And that he wouldn't be able to make good on his promise and take away our sin. 
But in those dark moments of his death, he actually took our sins upon himself, removing them from us. In 1 Peter 2, verse 24, it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. When we believe in Jesus, we no longer live in that dark world of sin. We can know that he has taken away our sins, taken them onto himself. Jesus himself said in John 12, 46, I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. We can live in the light of life instead. And although the powers of darkness seem to have triumphed, Jesus came back from death. He truly is the light of the world. So Jesus is the solution. Now I've got um, a reading, someone, I think it's Janet or Jane has got the reading. I mentioned the, the, this verse briefly um, as we were doing that little experiment. And uh, Jane's going to come and read that verse to us one more time. We're really going to sort of focus on that verse this morning. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Thank you very much, Jane. So... As, as illustrated by so well by Colin earlier, when we're living in the dark, we can't see where we're going. But Jesus illumines our path. He comes into the world and he says, as well as I am the light, he says, I am the way. So in that verse we just read, it says, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. And of course, darkness also hides the way that things really are. Have you ever been in your kitchen you've opened a really dark cupboard and looked into the back of it and you're almost afraid to what you might see there if you shine a light or a torch into the very back of that cupboard. I can see a few nodding heads here. Well Jesus shines his light into the dark corners of our lives and Jesus' light reveals the truth of our situation, the difficulties that we're in. Jesus says, I am the truth and he tells us the truth about who we are. But yet he is the solution to our problem. He is the light of the world. And the darkness of sin, as our illustration showed us, brings death and judgment. But the light of Jesus shines into that situation. He took all that judgment on himself. So he can say to us, I am the life as well. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And whoever follows me will have the light of life. Isn't that wonderful? So I think it'd be good, wouldn't it, just to focus on that verse a little bit further. I wonder if we could actually learn it, uh, John 8, chapter 12. Let's just see if we could help ourselves to do that with this. Now, has anyone heard this piece of music before? I have to say, I, I, I don't watch EastEnders, but I have heard that theme tune a few times. It sometimes comes on when I've just been watching something else, or just before I'm about to watch something else. So I've definitely heard that tune, and I know it relates to EastEnders, but actually, it's not the tune to EastEnders. It's the tune to John 8, verse 12. Do you believe me? No. No. Right, well, here we go. Look, here's, here's John 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world, they who follow me shall not walk in darkness, they will have the light of life, John 8 verse 12, John chapter 8 verse 12. Now, here we go, this is it, we're going to do it with the East Enders tune, okay? So let me get my, uh, let me get my microphone out here, I'll come around here so I can see it. Right, here we go, we're ready. 
I'm the light of the world. They who follow me shall not walk in darkness. They will have the light of life. John 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12. I told you it was the tune to John 8 verse 12. Right, let's give it one more go, shall we? Now you've got the hang of it, so we, we'll get this together. Here we go. The light of the world, they who follow me shall not walk in darkness, they will have the light of life. John 8 verse 12. John chapter 8 verse 12 John chapter 8 verse 12 Well, never be the same again for you now, will it now? That's probably a good thing. Well, I think we're going to sing another song now. We're going to listen to another song, um, which is going to be on a video, but uh, I think we know it because we've had it before. I think Paul introduced this uh, great song to us, and it's called Jesus, the Light of the World. So uh, if you know it, feel free to stand up or stay seated as you wish and, and join in with this uh, great song. And then Colin's going to bring us another little object lesson. <laughs> Right. 
feel like this morning? Do you feel like the light? Well, I'm going to tell you that you are a light bulb. Right? We are all light bulbs. And like light bulbs, we come in different shapes. Anyone volunteer to be this one? <laughs> I think it's very Halloweenish, that one. Okay? We all come in different. Also, we all come in different sizes. This is the smallest one I can find. <laughs> we all come in different sizes. We all come in different colors. Colored hair, colored skin, colored eyes. Running out of fingers. We also uh, come in, I suppose, represent different ages and styles. Some of us are old fashioned, there are lots of these, but some of us are modern and up to date, right? <laughs> and so, we all have, I guess, a different role to play. Yeah, a different role to play. What else have we got in here? And we all have, I guess, different strengths. Different strengths. And some, like this one, I suppose, we all, some are long life. You know, on the news, I was in uh, Northwest News on Friday, they were celebrating a lady uh, who had reached 110. And she was still very with it. She used to play cricket and she showed uh, uh, everybody her bat she had, which Don Bradman had signed <laughs> way back in, I don't know, 40s or 30s. You know, and she was still holding on to it like grim death. But 110. But some of us, very sadly, don't even reach 10. So we all come in long life, short life. But regardless how we appear, regardless how we come, these are pointless, no matter how expensive they are. This was quite, this, this one was quite expensive, I think. No matter how expensive they are, unless we do something with them and tap them into a source of power, this way doesn't work. I tried it earlier. Unless we, unless we uh, stick it into a source of power, they will not fulfill their purpose. No matter how expensive they are, no matter how glorious they may look, unless they are plugged into a source of power, they will not fulfill their purpose. So, what we are saying here is a very simple lesson. Unless we are plugged into the source of light and life, which is Jesus Christ, we ourselves will never find true fulfillment in this life or the next. Because the meaning of life is Christ, because he alone is the source of eternal life. And we were created to have a relationship with our creator, to glorify him and to enjoy him forever. For the Bible says, the kingdom of God is not about food and drink or fashion and clothing, but about righteousness, joy and peace in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And like these lamps, we need the power of the Holy Spirit within us so that we can reflect and we can be beacons of the light of Christ in our very dark world. Thank you.
Tim. Colin, that's what I call a real celebration. Uh, you've taken all these illustrations out of a great big box, which would normally be full of chocolates, called celebrations. I think a real celebration is to see and to know and to experience Jesus as light of the world in our hearts. And I think we come to the notices now, which is the boring part, so I do apologize. Uh, please just pay attention for a couple of minutes before we carry on. So, can we let it run? After the service, uh, I've seen that for refreshments are already in preparation. You're welcome to join us in the school room or in the community room at the back after the service. Everybody is welcome. Um, the self-help cleaning is taking this week. It's taking place this week, not on not on Thursday morning at ten o'clock but uh, from around 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, for which you are, to which you are also equally invited. Thank you. The coffee morning will take place this week, as you can see, between 10 and 12. The latest Bible study, uh, led by Brenda, will take place on Thursday, um, continuing Tuesday. Tuesday, thank you, continuing from the coffee morning at 10.45 till about 12 o'clock. All ladies welcome. The Thursday fellowship would this week normally be a prayer meeting here at 7.30, but we have agreed um, to go to Paddyham, to St. Lawrence's Church, to the meeting of the Christian Institute on the theme Identity Matters, which is a one-off meeting. This group is based in Newcastle, and uh, in Newcastle, sorry Gwyneth. Um, <laughs> well, it's not concert, but it was close to Newcastle, yeah. Okay. Uh, in Newcastle, but uh, their meeting in this area is uh, rather a rarity, so we want to take this opportunity. So we're not cancelling the prayer meeting, we are postponing it for a week. This week we meet at 6.45 uh, to travel in cars from in front of the church. If you would like to join us, even if you don't normally come to the meeting on Thursday, please let one of the leadership team know, possibly at the end of this service. Thank you. And as I am sure you're all aware, uh, our oldest member, Peggy Simmons, Thanksgiving service and funeral will take place on Wednesday morning beginning at 10.45 here. If you need to know more information because you haven't been informed yet, then please get back to us and we will let you know. Are there any other notices that we have? It's really good when you're looking in that direction. Isn't it? Thank, thank you, Paul. Operation Christmas trial boxes and leaflets are available here. Morag has uh, restocked uh, the boxes, so uh, if you haven't taken one and would like to take one, or you don't know about Christmas trial operation, what it is, then please take your leaflet or pass it on to those you know who would appreciate receiving a copy of it and reading it. There's no more space on the screen, so I think that's probably it. Unless you do a clever thing like changing the screen or something. Are there any other notices? Uh, our, our Segovia is going to be there on Tuesday. <laughs> no, it's great. Uh, it was really bad because last week I had to try and, and, and teach myself. And well, Tony was doing a real job to teach me how to play. But, uh, we're grateful that you're going to be there on Tuesday to lead anyone who would like to learn basic guitar from Graham. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay. We come into the second half of our service, which has the theme, Jesus wants us to be lights in the world. But I don't need to say any more about that because Tim is coming forward to lead that for us. Thank you. Well, we thought in the first half of our service about uh, John chapter 8 and verse 12, haven't we? About Jesus being the light of the world, and isn't that wonderful that Jesus is the light of the world? But we're going to get a, a sort of a bit of a surprise in the second half of our service because Jesus says something else as well, and it's at first sight it's quite shocking. Um, and Janet's going to come up and read for us, I believe, um, these verses. So they're up on the screen, but we're going to get Janet to come and read them as well. Down. 
Right, yes, this verse is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And it says, You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Amen. Thank you, Janet. So it's one thing for Jesus to be the light of the world, isn't it? And to, for him to come into our world and shed his light around. But he says in this verse, you are the light of the world. Well, how can that be? He's talking to his followers here, isn't it? How can that be? Well, it can be because when we trust Jesus, we receive his life into ours. He comes to live within us through his Holy Spirit. It's plugging into that power, the Holy Spirit that Colin was talking to us before. And so we should expect, if that's happened in our lives, we should expect our lives to reflect him and to reflect his light out to other people. And that's really the challenge for us as we think this morning about Jesus, the light of the world. He wants us to be the light of the world as well and to reflect his work and his life out to others. God is at work in each of us to make us more like Jesus so that the world can see him and his light through us. And these verses that we've just read also encourage us, don't they, to let that light shine out freely and not somehow try to suppress it. He says a city on a hill can't be hidden. It's there, it's visible to everybody, it's obvious. And a light that's there inside, like one of Colin's light bulbs, we don't stick it under a hood. We put it on and we let it shine out into the room so that everybody can see it. And we can all play a part in doing that together. And it's really powerful when the people of God all to come together and let the light of Jesus shine out. We've got a little video now to illustrate that idea of us coming together as a community of God's people and shining out his light. And it's a story about a lighthouse that fails. So we're indebted to Colin for finding this uh, video for us. Um, but let's have a little look at this video together. <coughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
It's powerful, isn't it, when we all stand together and we shine that light of Christ out into the world to warn those people who are heading towards the rocks that there is hope and there is life to be found in Jesus. That's what we're encouraged to do together and that's what our next song encourages us to do, to be little lighthouses all together and shine out into the world. So we're going to sing together, All Earth Was Dark Until You Spoke.
Hope you know more about lighthouses than I did when I was on this. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Question number one. What is the name of the lighthouse that is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world? Was it called the Statue of Light, Caesar's Candle, Maltese Lamp, or Pharos of Alexandria? Anyone like to get the motion moving with a hand up, please? D. D. Are we all say D? How about anybody put A? B? C? D. Right. Well, in that case, you are probably right. <laughs> okay. Yes, Pharos means, uh, I think, lamp. I think that's it means lamp or lighthouse. Okay. So, question number two. The Eddystone Rocks were a major shipwreck hazard for mariners sailing through where? Was it A, the English Channel, B, the North Sea, C, the Irish Sea, or D, Morecambe Bay? Right, put your hands up if you think it was A. If think it, put your hands up if you think it was B. Oh, there's not many hands going up here. Put your hands up if you think it was C. And if we had if you think it was D, and if you put your hand on your knees shooting. Holy <laughs> 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 right, all but I saw there's a fair balance here. Fair balance in D, so we don't know this one. Okay, the answer is the English Channel. The English Channel. It's in the, it's just it's near Plymouth, I think. Uh, it's, it's opposite Cornwall, but I think it's classed as uh, Devon, I think. Okay? Oh, so we've put an image of it. There we are. Yes. Uh, the question number three. What is the oldest lighthouse in Britain? <laughs> is it A, Saxon Lighthouse at Rye? B, Roman Lighthouse at Dover? C, Roman Lighthouse at Great Yarmouth? Or D, Roman Lighthouse at Hastings? Now we get to some tricky ones here. So, we hand up if you think it was A. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, put your hand up if you think it was B. Put your hand up if you think it was C. Put your hand up if you think it was D. Ooh, a majority on D for that one, but you'll be you'll surprise that the answer is B. Robin Lighthouse at Dover. I don't know what it looked like. Oh yeah, there we are. Yes, it's there. Yes. Oh, you've got a good job here. Yes, excellent. That's it. Yeah, right, okay. Next one, this is question number four. four. Uh, Trinity House is the authority over lighthouses in England and Wales. When was this body formed? Was it A, 1514 by a charter from Henry VIII? Was it B, 1802 by Admiral Horatio Lord Nelson? C, 1415 by request of the Lord Admiral? Or D, 1722 by the first Sea Lord? Okay, put your hand up if you think it was A. Don't be like Henry VIII here. <laughs> uh, B. C. Ooh, D. So majority on C. The answer is. Yeah, you see, Henry VIII did a lot of powerful things. And he set up. Oh, there we are, yes. Yes. Right, next one. Located in a natural preserve, which lighthouse is the smallest, highest, and deepest lighthouse in Britain and was attacked by German aircraft in World War II? Was it A, Bishop Rock in Scilly, B, Longstone in Northumberland, C, Berryhead in Devon, D, Sorter in South Tyneside? Right, put your hand up if you think it was A. You might as well just guess wildly on this one. Okay, A. Okay, B. C. D. Right. Well, the answer is C. Very head in Devon. Okay, very head in Devon. There we are. Right, next one. Which is Britain's oldest brick built lighthouse? The first keeper being a woman, a lady. So, was it A, Liso in Merseyside, B, Kinsweir in Devon, C, Wolf Rock in Cornwall, or D, Royal Sovereign in Sussex? Who thinks it was A? <laughs> Who thinks it was B? Who 
thinks it was C? And who thinks it was D? Oh, again, got quite a spread of hands here. Well, surprise, surprise, the answer is... Oh, did you actually know the answer to that? Yeah, yeah did you, so you knew that one. Ah, never mind. <laughs> yeah, spot the scalp, sir. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, next one. Oh, there we are. Yes, it's there, yeah. Okay. Which was the first lighthouse to use... I don't know why they put this, but I, I'm not a scientist, so I thought I'd better put the, the extra bit. Alternating current electricity. But electricity, I guess. And has a nearby fog on, his wife probably, that is the loudest in Britain. C, <laughs> uh, A, rather Coquette Island near Northumberland, B, Lizard in Cornwall, C, Scarborough in Yorkshire, D, Sorter in South Tyneside again. Put your hand up if you think it was A. B, C, or D. Oh, again, a fair balance. And uh, the answer is sort of south time side this time. Wow, wow, wow. There we are. Looking very uh, red and white. <laughs> okay, next one. Now you should all know the answer to this one. This is a famous one. Longstorm Lighthouse was the scene of a famous marine rescue in 1838 by the keeper and his young daughter. Who was this young woman? Was it Grace Heavenham, Grace Cromer, Grace Darling, or Grace Sweet? Put your hand up if you think it was A, B, C, D. And the answer is yes, Grace Darling. Oh, there she is. Somebody must have been there to take a picture of her. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, she died at the age of, uh, oh, I don't know, 27, through TB, I think, yeah, all that sailing didn't do any good. <laughs> right, next one, which of the following is London's only lighthouse and is situated in Docklands? Any, anybody from London around here? Was it A, Trinity Boy Wharf, B, Canary Wharf, C, Battersea, or D, Isle of Dogs. Right, put your hand up if you think it was A. B, C, or D. Really, still another fair balance of hands. Right, the answer is Trinity Boy Wharf. There we are, there it is. You're doing, you're doing, you're doing research very well here, Tim. <laughs> Okay, yes, right, and I think this, is this the last one? This might be the last one. Yes. Which lighthouse is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the smallest island with a building on it? Is it A, Staple Island in Northumberland, B, Cockhead Island off the coast of Northumberland, C, Bell Toot, I think, in Sussex, D, Bishop Rock in Scilly? Is it A, put your hand up. Anybody for A? Speak now, come on. A, A, no, B, C, D. All ah, right. And the answer is, oh, yes. So all those hands are put up for D. You, you knew it. So, right, so from now on, you'll know far more about lighthouses <laughs> than you did before. Thank you, Tim. Or oh, Ali. We're going to share together in prayer now, and Paul is going to lead us in this. Thank you so much, Tom. When Alex said we are going to share together in prayer, that is true. You were all given, I trust, a post-it note when you came in. Has anyone not got one? One... Take one. Now, our theme for this second half is about Jesus wanting us to be light of the world. And I'll give you, you your eleventh question in the quiz. 
that uh, Colin fortunately didn't have in his. Do any of you know that the name of the glass in the top of all those lighthouses do you know what the glass the reflector uh, the um, prism uh, is called well done who said that well done how Fresno, but it actually the S is silent. It's, it's important, is it? It's F R E S N E L, uh, and it's called free null, and the S in the centre is silent, which is really significant because often the S. The Saviour, who is in the centre of all we do, is often silent because we don't reflect his light in the world. And this glass that surrounds the light in the top of the lighthouse, if you look in uh, your dictionary and, and uh, or go in Google and, and try and search it out it will tell you that this prism, this glass prism that surrounds the light um, is transferring light from all around the light source and particularly light that goes vertical to a light that goes horizontal and a light that is focused in the world so that people far away can see. The uh, prisms around this light in a lighthouse can magnify the light from one candle, if you go to the old uh, form of measuring light, to 80 thousand candles. Now did you know that if a church comes together like this free now with a, a saviour in the centre that it will reflect God's light and it will magnify God's light to those around us. Now, we need to be aware that if we are going to be lights of the world, as we've been singing about, um, that we need to focus God's light outwards into the world so that it will become effective. And that means doing all sorts of things. But it does also mean that it needs to be focused. I want us to be focused this morning about our part in this light to those outside of this fellowship here. You all have your bits of paper and I would like you to write down very briefly either a name of someone that you would like us to focus on, or a situation that you would like us to focus on. We're going to collect these post-it notes and stick them on the whiteboard over here, so that after our time together this morning, you can come and have a look at what people have written. And um, then Jean is going to come and bring our prayers of intercession to us. So will you write on your piece of post-it note and will you bring it to the front and stick it on the board if you want to or leave it till after the service and then put it on the board. It would be good that we share a focus in our world around us.
So please, at the end of our service, our official service, will you come and have a look so that you too can pray for these situations that all of us have on our front line, if you like, outside of this fellowship. Jean. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for all you have done for us over this past week and for bringing us safely here to be with our church family to worship you today. Thank you for your great love and blessings over our lives. Thank you that your favour has no end. Help us to remember that you will never leave us, that you are our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And forgive us, Lord, for the times that we fail to lift our hands to you, for the days that we have forgotten to come to you first and instead tried to solve problems on our own. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit this day. Lord, you must despair of the mess that we've made of your wonderful world. Yes, we can still see some of the wonders, the Grand Canyon, the Lake District, beautiful coastlines, majestic mountains. But due to our greed and neglect, we put all this at risk. Please help us to be mindful of how we dispose of our rubbish and to be as green as we are able to be. And Lord, we pray that the meetings of the world leaders in, in Glasgow will come to some positive and realistic results in an effort to do all we can to save your planet and all those already affected by climate change. Lord, be with the countries that are suffering with ongoing wars. It's always the people of these countries who are the casualties. Please work in the lives of the leaders, that they see this suffering of their people. Try to work for an end of the conflicts, so that normal life can be restarted. And be with the people of Afghanistan, especially the women. And Lord, may the Taliban leaders realise how they work, the way they behave is seen by the world. And we pray that they behave in a moderate way, and that they can see the value of women and realise how women can help, co help contribute to the life of their country. Be with the leaders of this country. Guide them in their decision making. And please let them be willing to accept the advice that they will still need from the scientists re-COVID. As we are still in the midst of this pandemic. And sadly people are still becoming ill and dying from the virus. Help us all to be sensitive to each other's fears. We're thankful for the brilliance of the scientists who made, managed to create the vaccine and so grateful for the time and sacrifices of all frontline staff that they have made. Lord, I bring to you our church family. Be with those who have been bereaved. Help them to cope with the change in their daily lives. Help those who have suffered life-changing disabilities. Give them hope that they will cope and the courage to keep going with the rehabilitation, even when progress may seem so slow. Lord, we are all made in your likeness, but with different personalities. We all have different life experiences and different fears and thoughts. As in all families, there will be differences in ideas and opinions. Please may we always be aware of the way we speak to each other and to be sensitive as to how our words will be received however well-intentioned. May we always be kind and supportive, however different our thoughts may be, and that we don't try to impose our own thoughts and will and feelings onto others. Be with Gillian and Douglas as they prepare for Peggy's funeral on Wednesday. May it be a celebration of Peggy's long life and help them to focus on the good times and not the last few months which have been difficult. Father, we ask that you keep your guiding hand on our son, Brian, as he prepares to leave for Canada to work and to consider his future. Help him to feel your loving care. And we pray that he will remember the verse from Jerry Byatt. 
For I know the plans I have for you, and plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future, and trust that this will give him hope as he moves forward. We pray for our deacons and our pastor, Alec, that they know your guiding hand on them as they work on our behalf. Fill us with your joy and with wisdom and discernment. Fill us with constant reminders that your presence will go with us and you will give us rest and we thank you that you rescue us from all fears and distress. Lord, you said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And may your light and love blaze in us as we go about our daily lives. Heavenly Father, we ask so much of you, but we do so secure in the knowledge that with you and through you all things are possible. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. everybody. We're going to sing another song together, which uh, Joy is going to play for us. Shine, Jesus, shine. Thank you, Joy, and please feel free to stand to sing.
fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Alex, you've forgotten the Bible verses. Perhaps people were willing to do it. Can you just read them through? Yes. Yes, I'd like to explain it. Yes, you should. Uh, Many of you, uh, 13 in fact, should have been given a, a text to read out. If I start with Barbara here. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good. And then Jean? The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. How? Jesus said... I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jean? While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Gwyneth? The people walking in darkness have seen a light, a great light. Isaiah 9 verse 2. David? God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us for all sin. 1 John 1, verses 5 to 7. Um. Live as children of light, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with it the fruitless of deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Ephesians 5, 8. Great. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life. Philippians 2, 18 to 16. Brenda? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, and the God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8, 9. Hello. Let your light shine before men your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Lynette? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27, 1. Okay. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Psalm 119, 105. And finally, Debbie. Psalm 18, 28. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Thank you. Thank you once again, Colin and Jane and Janet and all those of you who have read. And I do apologise for having for some reason left that out of the order. But that's at the end, that's really great. And now you have all the opportunity to join with us in the school room, in the community room for refreshment. Look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.